everybody, this is Jeff Janess. Welcome to our second lab exercise on raster analysis. Here we're going to see how to generate a slope raster from a DEM using the surface parameters tool. We'll also take a look at how you can remind yourself of how you set up a tool by looking in the metadata. And for example, suppose you generate your slope raster and then you forget whether you created it in degrees or percent. You can find this out by looking at the geoprocessing history in the metadata. Now, as with all topographic datasets, we generate a slope raster from a DEM, or a Digital Elevation Model Raster, and then the slope raster is useful for many purposes after that, including identifying regions where you can perform some sort of activity. In forestry, we might be concerned about whether we can run harvesting equipment on a particular area, and slope is a big driver of that. And Maybe we're just interested in general slope statistics within our analysis area. Now, if you'd like to know more about how to analyze slope, take a look at the second lecture video in this module, where I discuss slope and aspect in a lot more detail. Now, in this demonstration, I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.2. And for those of you taking my classes at Northern Arizona University, you're going to use this slope raster later for your homework, so don't delete it right away. And before we start, there's a few things we should always consider before calculating slope. First, which tool are we going to use? Currently, ArcGIS Pro has two tools that calculate slope. They have the slope tool, which is their original tool, and then they have a newer tool called the surface parameters tool. Depending on which tool you use, you have to consider some different issues. First, if you're using the slope tool, the original one, then you must take care if your DEM raster is in geographic or latitude longitude coordinates. In this case, you must use the geodesic option in the tool. Otherwise, you've got to project your DEM before you calculate slope. Now, if you're using the Surface Parameters tool, then you don't need to worry about the coordinate system. The Surface Parameters tool will automatically use geodesic methods, regardless of what coordinate system your DEM is in. If you want to know more details about the problems with using geographic latitude-longitude data without using geodesic methods, take a look at the fourth lecture video in this module, where I discuss common issues we have with raster data. Next, are the elevation units in your DEM the same as the XY coordinate system units? Uh, if they're different, you say if your elevation units are in feet, and your DEM is in a coordinate system that's based on meters or degrees, then you'll need to specify the correct elevation units when you run the tool. It's really important for slope because if ArcGIS thinks, you know, for example, if your elevation units are in meters when they're really in feet, then you'll end up with slopes about three times as steep as they really are. or in the reverse case, you'll end up with slopes only a third the actual steepness. In either case, you will end up with a badly mistaken idea of how steep your landscape is. And if you need to, you can also set a Z factor that will convert units right in the tool itself. And speaking of elevation units, both of these tools check to see if your DEM have the elevation units specified in the coordinate system, and they warn you if it doesn't. It gives you this little message here about vertical elevation units, and I have a discussion of this issue in a separate video if you want to know more about it. Okay, let's get started here. First thing we need to do is add the data. We're going to add the semester D management unit. We're going to add the DEM. They are in our catalog. You can also hit the add data button here. I have the data stored in the class data folder. It's in the folder called raster functions. We're going to add the DEM layer and the semester D management unit. Just add that in there. Okay, we're going to calculate slope using the Surface Parameters tool here. So we go to Tools, just type in Surface Parameters. Here it is. We're going to use the Spatial Analyst flavor of it. Pretty simple. We just pull our DEM into the Surface Raster. We're going to call this raster slope, just so we know what we're dealing with. This parameter type will be slope. There's lots of options that you can choose from this tool. This one will be slope. We're going to go with quadratic. We're going to go with the default 
distance, neighborhood distance. The Z units are in meters. I happen to know that. But you should know this for your own data. If your data are not in meters, you will need to set this value appropriately. And we're going to calculate our slopes in degrees. We do have an option to do it in percent if we want, but in this case we're going to do degrees. If you'd like to know more about issues with calculating slope statistics when they're in percent, take a look at the second lecture video in this module. I talk a lot about some issues that we run into. But in the meantime, this is ready to go. We just hit run. Okay, we've got our slope raster. Different versions of ArcGIS Pro will symbolize this differently. Um, right now, this seems to be their style. I personally like to symbolize it as a stretched symbology ranging from light color if it's flat to dark color if it's dark. So I'm just going to do that real quick. I right click, go to symbology. We're going to change the primary symbology to stretch. The black to white looks good for me, but I'm going to invert that. And I usually like to go from not percent. Well, sometimes percent clip is good. For this one, I'm just going to use minimum and maximum. It doesn't make a lot of difference. Okay, so this is my preferred symbology. All right, so we've got our slope raster. Now we can do whatever we want with it. Um, one thing I wanted to bring out in this particular exercise is that suppose we come back to this raster several months from now and we load it into a new map and we want to do something with it, but we can't remember if it's in percent or degrees. We know what the minimum value is. We know what the maximum value is, but you know, is that degrees or percent? So I want you to know how to look it up. It's in the metadata of your data set. So let's come to catalog. Let's find our new raster. Here it is. We just created it. We select it in the catalog view. Look over here at the metadata, and there will be a section in the metadata called Geoprocessing History. This is everything that's been done to this particular data set. Sometimes this goes on for pages and pages. We've only done one thing with this data set so far, and that's to create it. And these here are the parameters we use when we ran the tool. So we look in here and we see that there's the word degree. This is the option that would be either percent rise or degree, and we chose degree. So now we know by looking at the metadata that this was created in degrees. Now, if you don't see the geoprocessing history, you might have your metadata style set to a version that doesn't show it. There's, there's one metadata style that's terrible, and that happens to be the default that ArcGIS Pro uses. So in this case, you'll want to change your metadata style. You come up to the Project tab, come down to Options. In this Options window, you scroll down to where you see Metadata. There's a Metadata. And over here are the different metadata styles you have available to you. The default is this thing called Item Description. And that's the only one that doesn't show everything. So don't go with that one. Come up to any of the others will be fine. I just go to this one as the first in the list. Hit OK. Come back to your catalog view and you will see the full metadata and including the geoprocessing history. All right, that takes care of it. Thanks so much, everybody. In the next uh, lab exercise, we'll be looking at hillshades. I hope to see you there. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>